We'll take a cup of kindness yet for old Lang Syne. Happy New Year and welcome to the 2015 season of Explore Tulsa. This year we start the show with a new guy calling the shots. Then a dog that's a Tulsa classic. Followed by Oklahoma through a cloudless lens. Plus good health wrapped in a frosty treat. Hi, I'm Stevie Fernandez. And I'm Trish Whitmer. Thanks for starting 2015 with us on Explore Tulsa. 2015 is going to be a spectacular year, Trish. Fortune 500 top 29 predictions for the new year are so cool. Well, I know they predict the economy to show some real improvement, along with unemployment to continue to drop while wages rise. Yeah, that's nice and all. But they also say that the Apple Watch is going to be a big hit. Mom jeans are coming back, and that human microbiomes are going to solve all kinds of medical mysteries. You do know that that's the study of our internal bacterial ecosystem that could be the key to some of our trickiest medical issues. Yep, they're going to do more studies of our poop. How funny is that? Other exciting things to look forward to in 2015 is watching the TU men's basketball develop under new head coach Frank Haith. I, I really, uh, when I grew up in North Carolina, uh, in terms of getting involved with the game of basketball, I just played everything. You know, kids today don't play all sports. And my little league coach uh, was a guy named Dr. Alan White, who was the athletic director at Elon. And my first experience was Mike League football. And then I graduated, obviously, to basketball, playing little league. And I was about eight years old, nine years old. And I had to sneak and play my first couple of years because my grandmother didn't want me doing anything but going to school and studying. And finally, she gave in and let me play. But uh, that was my first experience of getting involved with team sports and being involved with being a part of a uh, competing. And, and uh, But I always played sports when I was a little kid when growing up, and that was the way to stay out of the streets. My Little League coaches were like my mentors, and they were like my father figures. And the impact my coaches had on my life I said I want to have that kind of impact on young people also because it was so it was so important to my development of who I was as a man. And uh, I went to college knowing I wanted to coach because of the experiences I had in my early childhood from Dr. Alan White. But but the experiences, they, the impact they had on my life, I said, hey, I want to do that for someone. And I went to college knowing I wanted to coach. I, I thought I was going to be a high school teacher and coach throughout my whole life, and I've been happy with that. And, I was fortunate enough to have opportunities to go to college right after while I was in college. And, and uh, my first college job was at Wake Elon, then at Wake Forest University. The Tulsa job was, it, it really attracted me because of the league and because of the leadership. Uh, joining the American Conference I thought was exciting. Uh, the competition level we were going to play. And, and Dr. Upperman and Dr. Grad, I thought were just tremendous. And my communication with them and, and their vision, it was exactly what my vision is in terms of student athletes and being a part of the young people's lives. And at this small school, you know, I was a head coach at Missouri for the last three years, and we won 76 games in three years. We had a lot of success. But I was, you know, the, the job in itself was about, for me, was about being happy and been at a place where I, I felt that we can sink our teeth in and our roots here and be here for a while. You know, I'm excited about the young people we have in this program, and I got to give Doug Wojcik and Danny Manning credit for, for recruiting great kids. And, and the program's in good shape, it really is. And as we make this transition to the American Conference, we want to be able to play a certain style of tempo and I think with that said, you have to have you know, more depth, quality depth players that you, that you can count on to play that style. Um, uh, we are implementing a lot of our things because, but I've learned a long time ago that you must play a style that fits your team in order to give yourself the best chance to win. So we haven't quite been full throttle like I want to be. But I do think we're able to do some of the things, a lot of things that we, we think are going to be staples of our program. You know, I would hope that, you know, when our kids' time is up and their four years are up, that, that, that they feel like they learn more than how to dribble a basketball. They, they learn life skills. And, and, you know, I go back to my, my first statement about the impact that, that coaches had on my life. And I, and I would want the kids, the young people, the student athletes, when they leave here to say, Frank Haith 
was more than needing just a basketball coach. And uh, you know, I, I want family people. Uh, family's important to me, and I would hope that you know when they start their family, they see Frank Haith and how I was a family man, or how I, you know, I was a good husband or a good father. I think they're going to be that themselves, and and I think it's important for us as coaches that we 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 do that. We do those things to teach those young people that when they when their time is up and they go out in the real world and they have to earn a living, that uh, that those things are important. I really like Coach Hayes. I definitely believe that his heart is in the right place, and I bet he's going to do big things for TU. Plus, he told me that if I grow seven or eight inches, that he might find a place for me on the team. Yeah, we'll all be looking forward to that, Stevie. But if you'd like to catch the action now, visit TulsaHurricane.com for a schedule of upcoming TU games at the Reynolds Center. Love going to sporting events, especially those that have a great pony. Oh, that does make a game even more enjoyable. But you know, here in Tulsa, the only place to get the greatest coney is where we've been getting them for the past 89 years. Oh yeah, Coney Island is a magnificent Tulsa tradition. And our friend John Erling joins us next with a portion of his interview with Jim McConnell from Voices of Oklahoma when we return with more Explore Tulsa. Ever since the first movie theaters opened in the early 1900s, man has been trying everything to bring that same experience home to enjoy with their families. And for more than 30 years, Video Revolution and their home entertainment experts have been making those dreams come true by designing custom home theater solutions for both in and outdoor use. From 1080p LEDs to the brand new Sony 4K flat panel TVs, or come in to see the latest in sound bars and surround sound setups. Always the top name brands are found at Video Revolution. That same electronic expertise we also apply to your business communications network. From boardroom automation to video wall presentations. No matter what technology the future holds, you can count on Video Revolution to be leading the way. Tulsa's headquarters for the best selection and installation of cutting-edge electronics. Video Revolution on the northwest corner of 71st and Lewis. Hey, it's Stevie from Explore Tulsa with my friend and optometrist for many years, Dr. Robert Zellner. Tell everybody why it's so good to come in to see you. <laughs> well, that's a great question. Let's see, we've got two great locations. We try to stay cutting edge at every point along the way because let's face it, everybody wants to come in and get taken care of in a timely fashion and get the latest, greatest stuff and save some money and get on with their life. And, and, see, and see clearly. And if you don't believe it, look on the website. Absolutely, drzellner.com. You can find that we have our two locations at 69th and Memorial and 30, 3030 South Harvard, or you can give us a call at 749-2020 or 461-2020. And I got four kids, and I gotta tell you, as a big family like that, it's affordable too. Oh yes, and of course, the number one reason, you save some money. I mean, with our two pair specials, with our uh, different unique packages that we put together, I mean, you can come in here and your money can go a lot farther than anywhere else. And that's why with Dr. Robert Zellner and Associates, Seeing is believing. Oh, I like that, yeah. Stevie. Well done. <laughs> Hello. It's such a pleasure to start off the new year with you on Explore Tulsa. I hope you can keep that happy spirit, Trish, because another prediction for 2015 is the rise in cost for your morning mood enhancer. The price of your favorite morning latte is expected to be as much as 30% more this year. Who are you kidding me? I wish I was. Some even say the coffee bean itself could be gone altogether by 2080. Ooh, lucky for me, my other favorite indulgent, Coney Island, will continue to be a favorite downtown hotspot. This month, they're celebrating 89 years of bringing their famous Coney's to Tulsa's, with a new location scheduled to open soon in the Brady District. Well, to celebrate, we've asked Voices of Oklahomans John Erling to share with us portions of his interview with Coney Island owner Jim Economo. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> just having a Coney, I gotta have one of these at least once a week, if not twice a week. And the story of this Coney actually starts way back in 1919 out east. Now, Jim Economo, whose father Chris and his brothers actually got into the hot dog business in 1919. The first store that they were able to open was in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. So is that where they were introduced to the I concept? Think they may have gone to New York and actually saw it. This idea of putting And that. apparently appealed to all three of them. They said, we're going to do this, we're going to take this concept, get the chairs. They were able to get a store ready in a few days, work it for six months, and the $3,000 that they put into the store, they would take it out after six months 
and sell it with an additional $3,000 coming in as profit. So after uh, Chris and his brothers owned several stores, their business model was they'd build one and then sell one and then they'd make $3,000 on that store and then they accumulated some wealth to buy stores. They actually ended up in Dallas in 1926 when they then decided to come from Dallas here to Tulsa. Well, they had opened two stores, I believe it was in Dallas, and uh, they felt that it was time to sell. They immediately wanted to go to either Oklahoma City or to Tulsa. He found a bank, found the money, found a place that he could open up. That was 311 South Boulder, and was able to negotiate an opening for January of 46. Uh, the entire story of Coney's in Tulsa is told on the oral history website VoicesOfOklahoma.com. Now this is an interesting story because during the depression years of say 1929 to 1932, Jim's father Chris was feeding people because obviously so many people were down on their luck and they really were hungry and so he would feed them out of the Coney store. I don't know how many people he was feeding. Whatever he was making, they weren't making that much but he was giving and the others were giving food to people. And it's amazing that you mentioned that because the people coming into the store years later and saying, you did this for us, you fed us then. They would say, I'd like to pay you. Wow. That was great. Yeah. It was wonderful. So as we tell the story of Coney Island in Tulsa, we have to talk about the school desks that I'm sitting on right now. And there's a very good reason we sit on school desks, and Jim tells us that story. From the very beginning, the reason being he never wanted a table. For instance, he had a small table with four chairs. One person sits at that table, that's the end of the other three chairs. You can't use them. One person is sitting at the table, I can't go and say, may I join you? It just didn't quite work out. So he had what he would consider his customer's own space. He had his table, he had his chair. This particular area was all his. Now, about the Coney itself, believe me, a lot of thought has gone into making the very perfect Coney. And it really is all about the chili. And by the way, no ketchup, please, because you will absolutely wreck the taste. That would never have gone over with my father. Why? Ketchup, for instance, has too much of a killing taste. Once you put ketchup on something, it doesn't make any difference how bad it is or how good it is. You will only taste the ketchup. It's not an enhancer. No, it says you're eating a ketchup dog. In fact, we still use the same reasoning today. A wiener, from the standpoint of spices, should be bland. The bun should be a type that can accept steam. Just the right amount of mustard. But the chili must predominate. If it's not that, then you don't have a Coney Island Abuiner's Coney. The downtown Coney store, as you know, is as iconic as our golden driller here in Tulsa. And I think it's really nice to know that something that was created in 1919 and, and came to Tulsa in 1926 in what was once a five cent hot dog is still with us and has survived over the years. Coney's have been good to us and I hope we've been very good to the public and to Tulsa. Occasionally we have thought well, we could have dropped the Coney and retired, and we just can't, we still can't do it. We feel like we're part of Tulsa, and if we were to retire entirely, it would be a disservice, and I don't know why I think that, but... It would be a gap there, there's no there, question. There's, it would be different. It's great to be living in Tulsa. This was a godsend. What a great Tulsa story this is about Coney's, which, uh, by the way... I gotta go get another one. I love their Coonies. They're just the perfect size too, fun to eat. And I finally get to sit in a school desk with a treat instead of a dunce hat. <laughs> Celebrate 89 years of the Coney by stopping in at Coney Island at 4th and Boulder. And be sure to ask them all about their new location coming soon. You can also enjoy John Erling's entire interview with Jim Economo by visiting VoicesOfOklahoma.com. I'm so glad the Economo family saved all of those great photos of Coney Island's development through the years. Amazing pics tell a wonderful story. Then you'll love our next segment as we meet the photographer behind Cloudless Lens Photography when he tells us the stories behind the pics he's taken from all around Oklahoma when we come back with more Explore Tulsa. 
Hello, I'm John Erling with Voices of Oklahoma, and our great state has been home to countless individuals whose place in history has been earned through each of their many individual accomplishments. Voices of Oklahoma's mission is to preserve their story in an oral history presentation like none other. Accounts direct from famous Oklahomans, political figures, and many others who have left their indelible mark on the development, history, and future of Oklahoma. So please, treat yourself by listening to those who are the Voices of Oklahoma. If you're like me, you never leave the house without your camera and never miss a chance for more Explore Tulsa. More people than ever are just using their phones to take all their pics. Yeah, but I was so hoping that by 2015 they'd have some kind of camera that you could hook up to your eyes and take pics. Smile, Trish. Luckily for us, that has not happened yet, in that there are still artists who prefer to use an actual camera to capture life and pic, like those taken by Reese Martin. Well, uh, I had what you might call a quarter-life crisis. I uh, sold everything I owned and left the country. I backpacked for 10 months. And I wanted to write about the experience and I wanted to take pictures to share with my friends and family back home. Uh, I didn't really have a specific focus. I had a kind of a timetable. Uh, and when I came home, uh, a brand new person really, uh, I looked at the pictures that I had taken, saw that some of them were pretty good, and decided I wanted to take what I'd learned over the last 10 months, turn it on Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, share that with the rest of the world. When I think of pictures I've taken that just really sit with me are the ones that I've taken since I've come home. Uh, not long after I came home, my father passed away unexpectedly, and so I found myself, you know, mourning his passing and trying to understand how to express that. Uh, and my favorite picture that I've ever taken was on a stretch of Highway 11, uh, up kind of by Pawhuska. Uh, which was his hometown, and so I found myself going back and forth a lot trying to handle you know, business and everything. And it was just a foggy February day. I had stopped to take a picture of a couple of pump jacks uh, that had just lined the landscape out there, and just took a picture of the road. Um, and it's an, one of those pictures that I didn't really understand it until I had taken it and looked at it and analyzed it. Um, and it just really represented kind of the unknown I was moving into and the change I was going through, but all, all seated in this place that held so many memories for me. I take a lot of road trips around northeast Oklahoma. Someone tells me, hey, there's this old bridge that got closed. Uh, you know, I'm in the car and I'm gone like the next day. Um, or somebody mentions, oh, I grew up in this little town that I've never seen. I'll go take a look at it. Um, and so I usually have at least one destination, but it's really about the journey to there and then the journey home. I don't like taking the same road home that I took going out where I'm going, so I can just stop in these little places that I might otherwise never see. Route 66 has a big part of that. Uh, you know, we're out here at Red Fork right now, um, and the Metagold sign at 11th and Lewis was kind of my, my entry into that. But that's really the, the starting point for me to branch out on Route 66 and to start to say, okay, so Route 66 is big. A lot of people know what that is. What else is here? What else kind of taps into that same kind of American heartland feeling that we have here? So whether it's wandering around and looking at the Art Deco architecture downtown, or it's looking at things like the Tulsa Driller, going out to see the Blue Whale, just things that say Oklahoma without necessarily having the word. I love old steel bridges, like the old steel truss bridges. You know, there are less and less of them around. Um, and there's one in Avant that crosses Bird Creek uh, that's been closed for, you know, about 15, 20 years. Uh, and it's just this wonderful, peaceful place. And I have so many pictures. So that's one of the only places I have pictures of in all seasons. I've specifically gone out there um, several times in the last couple of years to capture what this abandoned steel structure looks like with all the overgrown uh, branches going through there and the ivy and everything else. Um, it, it feels like a place out of time. Well, um, I want them to think that I'm somebody that will stop and, and look at something that maybe they felt was important, but maybe they didn't know anybody else saw it. Um, I had a, a conversation with somebody uh, the other day that had seen a picture I'd taken at the Ponkin Theater up in Ponca City, um, and we sat and talked for 20 minutes uh, about the theater and the things that it had, the memories she had of it and what it meant to her family. And that's what it's all about for me, is somebody seeing something and saying, I had nobody, I had no idea that somebody else stopped and appreciated that like I do. Oh, it's everything. I used to, I used to work, you know, 40 plus hours a week at my job in an office, you know, and I, mean, I still do that to pay the bills. But now, I have a passion. I have something that does take my time outside of work, 
um, and it's more working to live instead of living to work. Reese has such a great eye, and so many of his images would look very nice in any home or office. I think I might model for him at some point. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. if you'd like to see more of Reese's work or add one of his pieces to your collection, visit cloudlifflin.com to learn more. I think a pic of me on a hot summer day on Route 66 enjoying a mango Jared's Pro Pop would be a true master. Oh brother, maybe you should ask Jared what he thinks when we visit with him next on Explore Tulsa. Hi, Dr. Robert Zellner here. For over 20 years, I've offered affordable, convenient eye care in Tulsa. Right now, you can get one pair of glasses or contact lenses starting at just $99 or my two-pair deal for $129. Hey, and as always, the eye exam's included. Walk-ins are always welcome. Glasses are ready in about an hour. Plus, we have over 2,000 claims to choose from. We're open seven days a week. Come see why we're voted Tulsa's best. And our drive through at 69th and Memorial makes pickup simple and easy. For the best eye care value in Tulsa, Dr. Robert Zellner & Associates. All right, all right, all right, and welcome to the future. TV, do you have any predictions for 2015? I'm so glad you asked, because in this envelope is the question to the answer I possess. All right, let's hear it. Kardashian. Kardashian? Mm-hmm, yeah. Kardashian, what happens when your probiotics kicks in while driving? Oh, that isn't exactly how probiotics work, but it can be very healthy to supplement your digestive system. And right here in Tulsa, Jared has found a way to add probiotics to healthy snacks that taste good. I, I've been a big fan of popsicles. I think everybody's a big fan of popsicles. However, um, it just kind of started within the past couple of years. Um, my sons love popsicles and it just stemmed and blossom from there. I was something completely opposite. I, I was in the money management business, so I, uh, I did that for a long time. And so I was one of those crazy dads that I would make yogurt and I would put all sorts of things in my kids' lunch. Uh, and of course they ate it and they said I was awesome. But um, they wanted something different. So I started making sodas and just really um, you know, doing a lot of research about ways that you can use probiotics and things for different types of foods. Uh, what probiotics do and enzymes um, is that they actually help break down the sugars and break down the food so that your body absorbs the nutrients. So with my um, probiotics in um, the foods is that it does, I've really taken a lot of the guesswork, or the probiotics I should say, uh, has taken a lot of the guesswork on really what it, uh, you have to do with foods. So making it very easy to digest, you're getting most of the nutrients from the foods, your body is healthier, it has natural energy, and it's just a great way for your body to use whole foods. So I just would take a bunch of fruits and mix it with some juice and do it and it just ended up like a giant ice cube and it just wasn't tasty and of course I was thinking they were the best things since sliced bread. I was handing them out to people and say, hey, these are great and they weren't. Uh, and so what I you know, figured out is that um, the more that you use natural foods as opposed to you know, juice or other things, the more that you actually use the foods themselves, the more that the probiotics can actually work and make it naturally sweeter and make it naturally creamier and make it naturally palatable for the body and for the taste as well. You know, the, the idea uh, behind making Jared's Pro Pops was that I wanted to really create something that was healthy, that actually made you healthier by having it. And so the, the popsicles themselves, I mean, most of the things that you have, it's just a lot of sugar and just a lot of coloring. Whereas what I do with my popsicles, is certainly they're all organic, um, and, um, but the, the distinguishing characteristics are the probiotics that are actually used in each and every popsicle. Uh, the probiotics are really kind of the magic elixir is what I say for this, but um, you know it does so much for the foods. I mean generally you can find probiotics in a lot of foods, but um, having it in the popsicle form, as I said, you become healthier actually by eating it. So it's not just, I mean it's a dessert, it's something tasty, but it's also a healthy alternative to somebody that takes like a supplement or something along those lines. In terms of the actual water base that is gluten-free and um, you know non-dairy, there's nothing like it on the market. You can get them at pretty much um, most of the farmers markets. We do sell most of them at Cherry Street or Guthrie Green Farmers Markets. Um, but uh, we're also selling them in old school. We're, we started an old school bagel company. We're starting to sell them in the Phoenix. We sell them at a lot of local stores, dwelling spaces. In the beginning, I, I was so preoccupied with with um, you know creating a good popsicle that people wanted to talk about. And you know, I've had several people. You shouldn't give stuff away, and I still do. But you know, because I like people to like the taste. And now I finally accepted the fact that these are absolutely phenomenal tasting popsicles. And so, you know, once you get past that, and you're very comfortable—at least I am comfortable—knowing that, you know, most of the ones that I put out there that are great tasting, then I can just again start focusing on the good health benefits. And you know, I don't have to worry about 
really too much because I've got that process now. So now I can talk about probiotics and the reason that they're good healthy popsicles and the things that I love to do. Those Pro Pops are very tasty, mm. and Jared just won a Kickstarter campaign to launch his new line of probiotic sodas. Oh yeah, to learn more about Jared's new soda or how to buy Pro Pops for yourself, visit jaredspropops.com. You know what he needs? A jingle, check this out. A one of a kind, gluten free, junk free treat, all brought to you by the Popsicle Dude. Stick around, we'll be right back for more for Tulsa. Yeah. Hi, I'm Terry Farrell here at Video Revolution, and I wanted to talk today a little bit about the new 4K TVs. TVs basically are made up of 1,080 lines of resolution. Each line of resolution has thousands of pixels. A 4K TV is basically doubling those lines of resolution from 1080p to 2160p. It almost quadruples the number of pixels, so we have a crisper, more detailed picture than we've ever had before. You think that regular high definition is good, and it is, but the 4K technology is that much better. The resolution is just incredible. Seven or eight years ago, we would back people up 20 feet from a 70-inch TV for it to look good. Now you can literally sit six feet from a 70-inch TV, a 4K TV, and it just looks incredible. With competition between all the brands, the prices are falling. Eight months to a year ago, you almost paid double for the 4K technology. We carry the Sony, Samsung, Sharp, uh, even have a big 84-inch LG 4K TV. If I was looking to do a custom home system, I would want to build it around a 4K TV because you don't want to have to be replacing something and be backwards in technology. You want to be set up for what's to come. 4K is the way to go, and this is the place here at Video Revolution to come and see a good demo. Be sure and join us next week when we meet those who take on the Tater Polar Bear Plunge. Special thanks to Coach Frank Haith. Welcome to Tulsa and good luck this year at TU. Well, thanks too to John Erling from Voices of Oklahoma for sharing his interview with Jim Economo of Tulsa Coney Island fame. And to Reese Martin for sharing his wonderful pics with us from Cloudless Lens Photography. Plus thanks to Jared for introducing to us Pro Pop. We're looking forward to the launch of your new soda. Remember, if you miss any of the show, you can always catch us at ExploreTulsa.com. As always, each week we feature the people places and attractions that make us proud to call Tulsa our home. Hey, don't forget to like us on Facebook. Share with us someone you think Tulsa should know more about. Plus remember, Explore Tulsa is brought to you by Video Revolution, located on the northwest corner of 71st Lewis. Stop by, say hello to Ron and all the guys for your home entertainment needs. And Explore Tulsa is also proudly brought to you by Dr. Robert Zollner and Associates. Home of the two pair for a $129 deal with two locations. 3030 South Harvard and 69th and Memorial. Well, that's all the time we have for you on this week's show, but we'll see you next week right here on Explore Tulsa.